Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Well, today was a big nothing burger, wasn't it? <laughs> we were expecting this rate cut. Central Bank announced that they were going to cut rates, and they did cut rates today. They cut them by 0 0.50. Not a big, maybe bigger than expected. Some people were saying they were only going to do 0 0.25, but they went 0 0.50. So today is the day. And, well, drum roll, please. This morning, before they announced the rate cut, Interest rates were hovering about 6.11%. And where are we? 6.15 at the announcement. What? They went up? They announced a cut? Yes. Yes, we've been saying that because it's anticipated. The mortgage market is uh, forward-leaning. In other words, they're about six months out. So they expect if the central bank's going to cut, it's, it's just baked in the cake. So... Now, but the interesting thing in listening to the Fed chairman talk today, you know, he only mentioned housing once. We live in this real estate bubble, and, and uh, we think that most of the rate decisions are all based around housing, and they're not. You know, they have two mandates. They need to keep employment steady and uh, control inflation, protect the dollar. So they feel they're doing that. Uh, they feel that unemployment is starting to go up. They feel that now is the start time to go ahead and start pulling rates back. He actually said the only thing he said about housing today was that last year was a tough year, but good news is we're starting to see more inventory. The last time he spoke about housing, he said, I can't do anything about inventory. So, you know, I can't control prices. Um, so rates are coming down and uh, not because of housing. Rates are coming down because they feel they're getting closer. The core inflation being at their target of 2%. I think we're 22 um, that's kind of a weird number anyway that they just kind of made up out of thin air a few years ago. Uh, but, you know, to each his own. A lot of central banks have been lowering their rates faster than we have. So that really makes a difference in the value of our dollar and so on and so forth. It gets very, very complicated. But uh, he was also asked if this was the beginning of a lot more rate cuts. Now, the people that are watching the market and the bond traders, they uh, they were waiting more for more language. Is he going to be more aggressive, going down 0 0.50 and then give any indication he's going to go 0 0.50 again and then again and 0.75? And he basically said, no, no, we're just going to watch and uh, we're going to make decisions based on the data, which is his standard answer. He didn't give any, any indication that he's about to ramp it up. And I think traders were really waiting for that. That's why the mortgage market didn't budge today, just actually kind of did a little skippity do up. So again, it was kind of a big nothing burger today when it comes to the mortgage market and to housing. But what are we seeing in housing? And this is an interesting uh, thing here in the Cromford market in the report. We're now seeing definite signs of small improvement in demand, no doubt influenced by the lower prevailing mortgage rates. I'm going to kind of show you some things to kind of clear that up for a minute because it's going to be a headline going forward the rest of the year. And I don't think it's a headline you can get too excited about. Number of listings under contract is up 2.5% compared with a year ago. Last time we saw a year-over-year -year increase was back in January. <coughs> Excuse me. It was only a mere two days. They're also up 4.7% over last month. That is not huge, but it's a sign that transaction volumes are no longer getting worse. I'm going to show you the next chart. Uh, you can agree to that. Before sellers get too excited, it should be pointed out that active listings are also rising. So it would seem that many of these extra buyers are also sellers. This means it's the move-up sector showing signs of life. Because of this, the Cromford Market Index is still going down. And we've been seeing that uh, as I've been looking at it on a daily basis that, um, you know, they... The Cromford Market Index is definitely on its way down. Um, if I look on the daily chart, and this is a measure of supply and demand, and here it is, we're down. So we're down balanced markets any at 100, and we're down here at 97.5. Now, the number that I track when I look at my seven-day moving average is um, kind of interesting in that I show here that new listings are climbing. Um, not huge. I mean, we're running about 2,900, 2,600. Now we're about 3,000 average 
and by new listings, I take new listings and houses that are put back on the market. Then I subtract canceled listings and expired listings, say, okay, this is what was dumped on the market the past seven days. And then the dark line down below is how many went under contract. That little dip you see right here is Labor Day. So the number of contracts are staying pretty steady. They're not really moving much. But I just showed you where the Cromford report says, yeah, but um, listings under contract are actually up versus last year. Okay, let's take a look at that because I think it's going to surprise you. In that, it's right here. Notice how we're above last year. Again, this is Labor Day. So we're up versus Labor Day. No surprises there. But here's what I'm going to caution you on when you look at headlines now going forward. Because you're going to get these headlines. And uh, it's going to be comparing this year to last year. And the percentages are going to be big. What did Bush say once? For, we go up bigly. Um, if we just stay right where we're at on listings under contract, compared to last year, that's going to look pretty glossy. That's going to look very good. If we go up at all, it's going to be unprecedented growth, phenomenal growth, well on the road to recovery. Well, recovery to what? You know, we did have listings under contract back in uh, April last year, 10,000. Now we're down to 2,500. So... I just point that out to say as the headlines start warming up, I think you're going to see more and more headlines about how things are really, really starting to pick up. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. There is um, really good activity in the luxury market as evidenced by what we see in Paradise Valley and Scottsdale. You can see that year-to-date numbers, they're up 8.5%. Fountain Hills up 7.7%. .7, Rio Verde up 6.9%. And uh, the negative numbers are Tonopah down 3.2%. Year-to-date numbers. Arizona City about flat. Coolidge down minus 5. Even Maricopa still up 1.7%, despite all the heavy competition from new builds out there. So that is... Uh, where we're at, I hate to disappoint Reventure Consulting. Sorry, pal. I know we were supposed to go down 30% yet again this year, and we didn't. So keep trying. Um, keep pushing there. You never know your day could come. So, And I'm over here just, I'm not cheering for you. I'm just watching it. Um, there's no perfect time. It's nearly impossible to call the peak of the market in real estate. There's a shock. It's not a market watch because sooner or later there'll be a recession or skyrocketing interest rates or a series of Fed rate cuts. Unless you have a crystal ball, you will have a hard time balancing the macro, what's happening in the world, with the micro, what's happening in your life. In other words, people asking, is it now a good time to buy? Well, realtors are going to go, well, yes, we have more inventory. Is now a good time to sell? Well, yes, because interest rates have gone down and we've got more buyers. Uh, you're always going to find a good time to buy and a good time to sell. Trying to figure it out that exact point, like my friend Pat likes to say, nobody rings a bell at the bottom of the market. Nobody rings a bell at the top of the market, whether it's real estate or stocks. It all depends on you and your personal story and your personal needs. Now, as far as projecting out where interest rates are going, it's pretty clear in what they said that they feel like they are starting to meet their goals, that we can start easing, that there was no longer a need to tighten. However, they will look at the data, so they're not saying they're going to go down fast. He did say several times, we were very patient over the past couple of years in our actions, and we continue to plan on being patient. In other words, don't get in a hurry with these guys. They're going to look at the numbers. And they're going to move slowly. Barring any other financial hiccups that make them have to pull levers quickly, they have every intention of being patient, watching, and waiting. So we can sit back and we can assume that rates are going to be lower next year at this time, but it's impossible to say how much lower. So many buyers are taking that under consideration, saying, well, I'm going to wait it out to see where rates go unless I see real estate prices start to climb up again. And with inventory coming up like it is now, the likelihood of real estate prices all of a sudden taking off 
doesn't look like likely to happen in our market. It also does not look like prices are going to come down. Central Bank was saying that we are looking at more balance now. And in our real estate market, we are definitely seeing in that market more balance. So no need to panic on the sell side. No need to panic on the buy side. Everybody's got time. When I see postings that say, I'm priced accordingly and it's still sitting there. Well, that means you're not priced accordingly and that's why it's still sitting there. You can compare all the comps in the world and say, I'm right at the market. But if there's only 2,500 buyers out there every seven days, you might need to sweeten the deal a little bit. Just my personal opinion. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.